How many more are there? Oh, two left. How many of these teleporters have I gone through? I must have gone through... It feels like I've gone through all of them, honestly. Eh. Nope, there's one. Okay. I've already said that these stages kind of feel bigger than they already are. Which is fantastic for a PS2 game. Now, I may have mentioned this before, that um, this game was released in Japan in 2005, and then released in the PAL regions, Europe, and so forth, in 2006. It never got released in North America. 2006 is pretty much close to the end of, well, the PS2, the time of the PS2. It was one of the last games to be exclusively released on the PS2. I don't think it was released on any other console. I think the last PS2 exclusive game was... was in, I think it was in 2008. Which was really surprising, because at that point everybody was either on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 was around... The Wii was around. Like, PS2 again just fell away. Yeah, I think it was Persona 4 was the final exclusive game, and then the rest were either sports games or movie tie-in games for the PS2, which, in terms of me, well, I was really disappointed. I think Sonic Unleashed was released for the PS2, but I'm not entirely sh sure. Maybe it was just my imagination. I swear seeing a copy of Sonic Unleashed for the PS2, and then also Spiral Dawn of the Dragon. But then again, I'm just kind of rambling on. There's the last orb, and I, hopefully the last wave of enemies before the final area. Want to use that elevator, please? I'm just gonna walk around these enemies and smash at this. If you get in my way, it's your own fault. There we go. I technically should think that, well, now I've destroyed all the orbs, I can go through the teleporter. Honestly, I don't think it's the case. I think after you kill the enemies, then you can use the teleporter to get back to the main room. It's a bit of a pain. Get up. You jerk. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of blue materia, but I don't think it's enough. Oh, uh, you can get so close to filling up the Oz gauge, and then all of a sudden, like, you run out of enemies to kill. And you may be just, like, one point out of getting a full gauge. It's a bit of a it's a bit annoying. Honestly. Because you have to do so many requirements on killing every enemy. You have to be stylish. You can't just juggle them all around and just like bonk them on the head and they're the dead. It's usually death blow. Yeah, I'm so close. Close, but no cigar. I didn't kill enough enemies stylishly. But now I can use it! Awesome! Let me see... Yeah, let's go in. Alright! We've made it! Yeah, there's no way out. <laughs> Apparently. But this is an interesting spot. Wide open area. Clumps of different things over here. Kind of odd. But they're not doing anything to us, so we might as well go on through. Oh! It's field! Is everybody okay? 
What's the matter, kid? Don't tell me. Deal? Get as far back as you can and keep still! Hey! Wait! The Earth God. Crimina Torres. I love the establishing shots. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, this guy is a... He's almost a little bit of a joke to me. Because he's just so ridiculous. He's really ridiculous looking. It looks like he has a face, but I don't think it is a face. But... The whole idea behind this boss is, like we saw before we went into the cutscene, he's made of many parts. Parts that are pretty much held together by magic or whatever. So the way you actually fight against him is you have to disassemble him again. You have to short circuit. You have to short his circuit. You have to disassemble him, bit by bit, in order to get to his pretty much core. You have to pretty much get him into this state, and then, boom, his core pops up. And then you just kind of go wild. If you have a death blow handy, that would be way, way more helpful. Oh, there we go. See, he kind of just explodes ridiculously. and it's, I don't know. It's kind of dumb. But then, of course, the magic lightning happens again, and, well, he comes back to life, and then you have to do it all over again. You just repeat this process until he dies. This boss is almost on the different perspective, like, the different spectrum, or the opposite spectrum of the Desperabilis boss. Desperabilis was ridiculous in terms of the thought process and the messed up feeling you get when you attack him. He's just sickening. This guy is ridiculous in that he's almost too big of a joke. Like this is the earth this is the earth god? Like the fire god kinda just kinda floated around in his nice ball of fire and he was cool and menacing in his volcano land. This guy apparently likes disassembling himself into pretty much whatever. And apparently you can stun the core too. Like what? <laughs> that makes no sense either. But yeah, whatever. He just kind of crumbles into rocks and pieces and then just kind of snoozes. Sure, fine, why not? <laughs> I'm actually doing surprisingly well until it shoots its magic lightning. Like, I know they're the gods are a really screwed up kind of design. Like, they're very specialty designed enemies. The concept guard people have to be very proud of their work. But I'd like to see a little more characterization to them instead of just like, yeah, they're, they're beasts. Whoopee. What do they do other than screw up the lives of the people that 
worship the gods. I don't know. Let's use that death blow. And just make him explode. <laughs> Did he explode? Aww. Fine. He didn't explode either. So yeah, there's legs, there's the two legs, or if you can call them legs, and then there's the two arm flailing bits that you can see here. And if you don't kill him fast enough, or don't make him explode fast enough, well... He'll get his legs back and then that's the end of it. <laughs> you gotta start all over again. Of course he sends tons of Volo after you in order to bring up the tension gauge, but... Man... Eh, fine. I even want to say, like, after he gets, like, closer to death, it's harder to take down his pieces. No actual evidence to support that. Oh, he, has, he has his cannon spawners. They kind of spawn spiky balls at you. And then they explode, and did he just appear out of nowhere? He's not supposed to be invisible. <laughs> I'm not getting much rendering here. Of course, being Earth, he likes stomping. He likes smashing. Come on, I can beat him now. Smash that nice little orby. I think that was the problem. I wasn't hitting the nice core in the middle there. If I can disrupt the core, then the rest of him breaks. Oh no, I'm almost... Aww. Oh. I'm almost there! You jerk, I don't want to fight another wave of you. Sheesh! This is a pain in my butt. I keep having to do this. Fantastic! I'm. Yeah. That's how you do it. And then he clumples into a ball into his form again and then explodes. Okay. Sure, why not? And then after this chapter is over, there's a great amount of, well, plot. But I'll cover that next episode. So next time on Let's Play the Sword of Ateria, where are we going next? Two gods down? How many do we go? Till then, everyone. Ooh, iron garment.